Greetings from Lome. It's a great pleasure for me to join you virtually once again to celebrate the anniversary of Togo's independence. You all know how deeply I believe in the vital role that the Togolese diaspora can play in achieving peace and prosperity for Togo. And so I'm honored to have this opportunity to address you. When I spoke to you last year by video for this same event, I talked about my optimism for the future of Togo and my hopes for the great advances in Togo's political and economic institutions. I remain very optimistic for Togo's future, but we all know that the past several months have been difficult for the country. I know that many of you have been following closely the political crisis that has shaken the country since last August, and that you're deeply and passionately invested in the outcome. I want to assure you that my team at the Embassy and I are fully engaged in supporting and encouraging the political dialogue, and that we are in constant contact with all sides to try to help to broker a solution. At every point, we have emphasized the need to respect human rights, civil liberties, democratic governance, and to avoid violence. And I can tell you candidly that at times both the government and the opposition have been irritated with us and that makes me think we are playing our proper role. According to a new poll released just last week, the majority of Togolese are unhappy with the current state of political affairs. But, importantly, they want change to be achieved through constitutional and democratic measures. We at the Embassy are committed to doing everything we can to strengthen Togo's democracy. But, to do that, I need your help. The diaspora has an enormous influence in this process. In my opinion, what we need now are constructive solutions based on facts. It's been distressing to me to see how many rumors and falsehoods quickly gain currency on social media, often on platforms linked to the diaspora. Sharing unsourced and uncorroborated information can influ inflame these already tense situations and in some cases lead to people being hurt or being killed. So please remember to share responsibly. Stop before you share. Reflect on what you see, what you read, and verify, most important, verify that the information is accurate. We know that you care deeply about sometimes alarming information that you're getting from your friends and family in Togo. You should know that when you have concerns, you can bring them to us. Maintaining that communication is very important to me. The next several months of political negotiations will be very important. But while it seems that sometimes like the political situation has drawn attention away from everything else, I urge you to consider that there's much work to be done beyond politics, whether it's creating economic growth, strengthening the education system, improving health care, and so on. These are all areas where we still need the engagement and support of the diaspora, now more than ever. When it comes to creating economic growth, you've heard me mention for several years now about how much Togo stands to benefit from a U.S. government foreign assistance program from the Millennium Challenge Corporation, or the MCC. I am pleased to tell you that the $35 million MCC threshold program for Togo was approved earlier this month, after two and a half years of negotiations and research. Now I know that some of you in the diaspora have concerns about this program. Some have expressed the fear that the U.S. government is giving a blank check to the government of Togo. Well, in fact, the MCC threshold program is not budget support, meaning that it will not involve a significant transfer of funds to the government of Togo. The MCC will directly contract 
international experts who will provide targeted technical assistance to help make reforms in two important sectors, in telecommunications and land rights. Now in the telecommunications sector, the program is designed to improve citizens' access to high quality and affordable cell phone and internet services by encouraging private sector investments, developing an independent regulatory regime, and expanding service to underserved areas, and increasing the use of technology in education, healthcare, agriculture, and other areas. Now with respect to land tenure, the program will seek to expand access to formalized land through the recognition and protection of legitimate land rights in five pilot areas across the country. It will also seek to develop a regulatory framework to implement the new land code currently in the parliament in Togo. Togo cannot build a modern economy if it does not have reliable and affordable phone and internet service. And people will not invest and create jobs if they can't get secure title to land. Reforms in these two sectors will bring increasing prosperity and greater economic opportunity for all Togolese citizens. And that's why the MCC program specifically targets these two areas. Finally, I want to point out that MCC reserves the right to modify, suspend, or terminate a threshold program at any time if the government violates the program agreement or shows any decline in its commitment to good governance. And as we move forward, MCC is going to be closely monitoring events in Togo with a focus on citizens' right to freedom of expression and association and due process. Simply put, Togo's selection for an MCC threshold program is a decision that will benefit all Togolese people and something that all Togolese can celebrate. I hope this explanation alleviates some of the concerns that you may have had regarding the MCC. I believe strongly that this program will have a very positive impact on Togo. In closing, let me just wish you once again on this 58th anniversary of Togolese independence, my deepest and most sincere thanks for the important work that you and the Togolese diaspora are doing every day to create a brighter future for all Togolese people. I remain very optimistic for Togo because I see every day the energy and the enthusiasm of young people here who want to contribute to their com communities and make things better. So please enjoy the rest of the festivities and rest assured that my team and I at the Embassy here in Lome are committed to advancing the relationships between our two countries and helping Togo to become more prosperous, more democratic, and more secure. Thanks very much. Bonsoir, chers compatriotes. Ici, c'est Claudine de la coordination Togo de USC. Permettez-moi de joindre ma voix à celle de la coordination Togo de USC pour vous exprimer une fois encore mes remerciements pour votre grande mobilisation le 13 janvier au Togo, en Europe, au Canada et ici aux États-Unis. Cette mobilisation inattendue montre combien la libération de nos chers pays, le Togo, nous tient tous à cœur. Sans vouloir ne citer notamment personne, je voudrais également remercier tous ceux qui se sont portés volontaires pour la réussite et se sont impliqués dans l'organisation de cette marche. Soyez-en remerciés. Si vous aurez euh, relevé des insuffisances dans la préparation et le dégouement de la manifestation du 13 janvier, surtout ici aux États-Unis, la coordination Togo de USC et moi sommes disponibles pour recueillir vos remarques et suggestions afin de nous aider à nous améliorer 
et aussi euh, à améliorer nos prochains événements. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes à un tournant très décisif dans cette lutte et la détermination de chacun et de tous devra être redoublée. Seule l'union et le courage nous pousseront vers la victoire finale. Prison partout, les chiens de la traîtrise, Togo debout, for Moscow, now. Claudine et Sosonio, je vous remercie.